cue ball control part two is about the effects of side spin on the path of the cue ball because side spin has no effect on the A path, that is the path into the first cushion. The focus here is on the B and the C path, the path off the first and the second cushion respectively. All good players know about and use the principles discussed here in position play all the time, uh, but we will just discuss the principles and we'll leave their use in position play for a later video. If we make a mark in the center of cue ball and another one as high and as low as we can possibly go and then go to the right and to the left, we get about to the edges of the stripes. And we can encompass this whole area by a circle, a circle of acceptable places to hit the cue ball. If you want the maximum range of left and right side spin like this, you better hit with no top or bottom. If you insist on using top spin, uh, you're not going to get the same range. Likewise, if you assist, insist on using right side spin, you're not going to get the same range of top and bottom. If I hit this ball left of center like this, I give it left side spin and I alter the angle off the cushion. Note again where I'm hitting the ball. Hit a ball straight into the cushion with no side spin and it comes back straight at us. Hit a ball with no side spin at 45 degrees into the cushion, it comes off at about 45 degrees. And then with no side spin shallow into the cushion at 20 degrees, it comes off at about 20 degrees. See some interesting things if you look at the effect of maximum right and left English for each of these three shots. Uh, for this shot, maximum right and maximum left gives you this. And what you see is a general principle that when you go near perpendicular into the rail, English has a huge effect. There's a very large angular range anytime you go near perpendicular into a rail. Going at 45 degrees into a rail like this, the effect is still there. The English changes the angle, but the effect is much smaller than when you go perpendicular into the rail. So when you go anywhere near perpendicular into a rail like this, English has a big effect on the angle, a huge effect on the angle. When you go closer to 45 and into the rail, English still has a decent effect on the angle, but it's not as big. When you go shallow into a rail like this, this is an important point, English has basically no effect at all on the angle of coming off the rail. Why do the geeks always talk about the spin to speed ratio? What are they talking about? Well, here's pure spin. It would be measured or discussed in RPMs or Hertz, revolutions per second, revolutions per minute, cycles per second, something like that. The important thing is that action off the rail is not determined by this. Here's speed, the speed that the ball is traveling. It would be measured in miles per hour, feet per second, diamonds per second, some distance divided by time. Uh, let's look at the ratio of these two things, the spin divided by the speed. Mrs. McGillicuddy always told you, or should have always told you, that if you carry through the units, you can get some insight. So if we look at the ratio of the spin to the speed, spin divided by speed, you can see that that is measured in revolutions per diamond. So how many revolutions does the ball take, or what fraction of a revolution in the last diamond of travel be before hitting the cushion? That is what determines the action off the rail. So the spin to speed ratio is actually what most players mean when they talk about the amount of spin. If you hit with a certain offset and you just hit harder, what you do is you increase the spin and you increase the speed both by the same amount, proportionally by the same amount, and you don't change the spin to speed ratio. If you want to change the spin to speed ratio, you have to increase the spin without a commensurate increase in the speed, such as by hitting further out on the ball. The other way to increase a fraction or a ratio is by decreasing the number on the bottom. If I offer you a salary of $2,000 per month, you're probably not very impressed, but if I change that into $2,000 per week, I've probably got your attention. Likewise, here, if we can reduce the speed without reducing the spin, we can get more action off the rail. There's two ways to do that. One is to hit a drag or a drag draw shot, where you hit the cue ball low, and then as the backspin is rubbing off on the way to the object ball, the, the cue ball is slowing down without the spin being reduced. The other is that the collision with the object ball itself takes away speed without taking away spin. I'm hitting this ball over and over again with no English from opposite one piece of chalk to opposite a second piece of chalk on the bottom rail and it's heading to the same spot opposite a, a third piece of chalk. Notice carefully the path into the bottom rail and the path off of the bottom rail because I'm going to achieve this same path into the bottom rail in a different way in a moment and you're going to see an interesting effect off the bottom rail. So notice the path into the bottom rail is exactly the same as it was before here. It's now the B path, it was the A path, but it's exactly the same. But off the bottom rail, the path is very different. You see that it goes now to that new piece of chalk. What's happening is that we're picking up side spin by collision with the first rail. This is a critical C path effect. 
Here's another important CPAF effect. For the first several shots, I'm hitting with no English, and I'm going into the bottom rail by the yellow piece of chalk and then back up to the top rail. What you'll see once I add English, and I'll, and I'll add both kinds, is that there's very little effect on the B path. You still go down near the yellow piece of chalk, but there is a huge effect on the C path. And this is the case when you go shallow into the first rail. Where the C path is here. I'm hitting with left English, that's running English off the first rail. What you see is that there's a very little effect on the B path. I still hit near the yellow piece of chalk, but there's a big effect on the C path. Uh, in a moment, I'm going to change to right English. There's right English. A uh, huge effect. Once again, huge effect on the C path, but notice I'm the, the B path, I'm still hitting near the yellow piece of chalk. This is a general effect. Whenever you go shallow into a rail, the English has a huge effect off the second rail, a huge effect on the C path, because you're going relatively perpendicular into that. A second, almost as important effect of side spin is what it does to the speed off a rail. What I'm trying to do here is lag this ball two rails right back to the rail near where I'm shooting from. Note how softly I have to hit the ball. I'm hitting it with running English, that is left English, and I have to hit very soft to just lag right back to the rail uh, where I'm at. Uh, it's gaining speed uh, from the English. One more time, just lagging it back to the rail. You see a pretty dramatic effect when I start doing this with uh, right side spin, uh, which is check English or kill English on, on these rails, hitting it at the same speed, I stop pretty much near the corner pocket here. Once again, at the same speed, doesn't go anywhere near to the back rail. Players use this effect all the time. I have to hit it quite a bit harder if I want to try to get back toward the rail. Uh, I have to actually hit it quite hard to make it go back toward the rail. This is a big effect and a very important effect, and, and the role of side spin and speed is a big one. These effects may seem complicated, but they're really not. It's the same few principles that, that appear over and over again, and you watch for them, you'll start getting accustomed uh, to them. Uh, cue ball position play is about using these principles and the principles uh, of the APATH principles from the last video to your advantage, not to make things more complicated, but to make things simpler. Cue ball position play is about risk management. It's about making your shots less vulnerable to errors.